Okay, so now let's look at your lab results to start getting our centripetal force equations. We're going to get three force equations and three acceleration equations. And at first it's going to seem a little daunting, but you're going to see there's an easier way to work through it. Just like your kinematic equations, we found that there was an easy way to work with them. So let's take a look at your results. We made the graph of the centripetal force versus the velocity. We got a top opening parabola. So we took all of our x values and squared them, and that gave us the straightened line. So then we get the equation that the centripetal force is some slope, some constant, times velocity squared. Well, that slope represents the mass of the object divided by the radius. So what that does is it gives us our first centripetal force equation, that the centripetal force is equal to the mass of the object times the velocity squared divided by the radius. So only the velocity is squared here. But now we'll use a little substitution method to get our other equations. So what is the velocity? Velocity is distance divided by time. So since we're going around in a circle, the distance is the circumference of the circle. So 2 pi r is the circumference, the distance, divided by the time period, how long it takes to go that one loop. So now let's substitute that in for velocity. But we got to square it. So now a little bit of algebra. Things start to cancel out a little bit. And then what that does, it leaves us with our second centripetal force equation m times 4 times pi squared. Now we can use 3.14 to represent pi times the radius divided by the period, how long it takes to go once around, squared. So now we have two centripetal force equations. Now to get our last centripetal force equation, there's the relationship between period and frequency, and it's an inverse relationship. So if I substitute that in for the period, I get my third and final equation. The centripetal force is m for the mass times 4 times pi squared times the radius times the frequency squared. So we have these three equations. And again, they look a little daunting. So how is an easy way to work with them? Well, all the equations have mass in it. All of them have radius in it. But this guy has velocity in it. So if they give you a velocity or they ask you to calculate the velocity, you'll use this equation. Meters per second is the unit of velocity. This one has the period in it, the time period. So if they give you the time period or they ask you for the period, then you use this equation, and that's in seconds or seconds per revolution. The third equation has frequency in it, so if they ask you to calculate the frequency or they give you the frequency, use this equation in revolutions per second or in hertz. So that's how you figure out which of the force equations to use. Now, we said that when we derived Newton's second law, F equals M times A, we said that this is the foundation of every part of physics. So whenever you look at a force equation, this F equals MA will always kind of pop up. So look at these three equations and see if you don't see F equals M times A. I've color-coded things so that maybe it might be easier to see. So F is in gray. M is in the turquoise, so whatever's left over must be an acceleration. F equals M, so whatever's left over must be an acceleration. F equals M, so whatever's left over must be an acceleration. So look at what we have. We have an acceleration equation, V squared over R because F equals M times A. F equals M times A. So this must be an acceleration equation. F equals M times A. So 
all three of these are acceleration equations. How do you use them again? Same idea. This has velocity, this has the period, this has the frequency. So we have three centripetal acceleration equations and three centripetal force equations. Which way does it accelerate? Towards the center. So it's called a centripetal acceleration. Center seeking acceleration. So it accelerates towards the center. Question. If we twirl it at a constant rate, how can it be accelerating? It changes direction because that's one of the three ways in which something can accelerate. It can speed up. It can slow down. It can change direction. So this is how it's accelerating because it's always changing directions.